Games Corner is a unique console-based gaming experience with 3D and LED screens, all within a comfortable atmosphere. Become a Games Corner franchisee now and bring this one-of-a-kind opportunity to your location. For more information, visit us at gamescorner.com. Hi everyone, this is Ahmed Kremli and welcome to Be Efficient TV. The mission of this web TV show is to boost the efficiency of your business and life through tips and tricks from leading experts. And today I have with me Christy Whiteman. She is the founder of Quantum Success Coaching Academy and she is a New York Times bestselling author for three books and she is an expert in the seven essential universal laws which is including the law of attraction. Welcome to the, to the show, Christy. Thank you so much for having me. It's a pleasure to have you. So how did you decide to take this authoring and coaching path and what is your background? You know, I didn't really decide it. It does like it was decided for me. Um, and, and I say that because I had a book come to me in a meditation and I thought, well, that's interesting because it had the, the exact graphics of the book and it had my name on it and everything. And, and I saw this in a meditation. I'm like, well, that's interesting, but I'm not an author, you know, and I went to bed that night. And about 1.05 in the morning, I woke up with just all this chat, chatting in my head. And it was like the first sentence, the first paragraph. Basically, the first chapter was just downloaded to me. And as hard as I tried, I couldn't roll back over and go to sleep. So I got up and I wrote down what I was hearing. And for seven days in a row, that happened to me at 1.05 in the morning. So I figured, okay, there's something happening here. I think I have a book. So I asked a, an author that I had seen speak uh, just uh, literally a week before and um, asked her, I think I have a book that I'm writing. What do I do with it? So she said, go online and find a, a literary agent. So first I pushed to put in literary agent publisher. And the first line was GMA publishing, which back in that time, I had no idea about publishing. And I ended up submitting my manuscript and he accepted it. So I had this book. And I did, after my friends and family bought it, it was like, okay, now what do I do with it? So I went and started speaking at spiritual bookstores and churches and places that people would want to hear this message. And when I was in doing the workshops, people would ask me, do you coach? I had no idea what coaching was, like life coaching. I, when I thought of coaching, I thought of like a football coach, a cheerleading coach. So I was very confused and they said, yeah, you know, coach us through the, the information in your book. And I said, well, just call me and I'll guide you through whatever you want me to. And I would get them on the phone and I'd help them do meditations and help them shift energy. And they were getting amazing results. So I just kind of left it at that. And I was still working as a pharmaceutical rep and people were watching the success that I was having. And they're like, what are you doing? So I started coaching people that I was working with. And finally said, you know what, this thing, this coaching thing, I really enjoy it. I'm good at it. I love it. So I went to school for it. So here I am well over a decade later. So I'm an author and I speak and, and also um, a coach. First book hit the New York Times uh, list? No, no, no. <laughs> no, um, my, my third book did. Why you were unhappy and how did you turn your life into like you and what you were doing that time? You were into working in a pharmaceutical industry or? Yeah, I mean, I learned about the universal laws about 18 years ago and I started to apply it to pretty much every every area of my life. I mean, you can't when you start when you start learning about it, you cannot not do that. And I, I really was unhappy. I was an unhappy person. And when I started to apply the universal laws, I started realizing that I really have a, a very lack mentality. I was always coming from a space of not enough. What I had was not enough. Who I was wasn't enough. The people in my life weren't enough. They weren't doing enough. They weren't giving enough. And so it, it's a very unsatisfying, um, very offsetting a place to be in in life. And as I started to understand that there's a difference between a, a lack mentality and a, an abundant mentality, I started shifting it thought by thought, belief by belief, emotion by emotion. And I'm still doing that to, the, to this day, 10 years later, you know, I'm still, we're, we're always humans. We're always evolving. We always have our own growing edges. And so, you know, now I don't have to do as much work on myself as I had to back then. But um, I still apply the same principles. So how to figure out what we want and uh, to be satisfied uh, with what we have? 
You know, every, every, every subject, it doesn't matter what it is. It could be our businesses, our finances, our relationships, when everything is energy. And when we're sending out energy, meaning by when we send out energy, like we are energy, you know, energy, um, creators and transmitters, we're, we're sending it out with our beliefs, our thoughts, our emotions. And when you are coming from a place that nothing is good enough, that this isn't good in the perspective that this is bad, this is wrong, you're coming from a lack mentality. But when you start to look for what's good and right about this moment, about the person, about the job, about the business, about the money you have, it might not be exactly the over the moon kind of thing that you want or desire, but the, there's a law, one of my favorite laws actually, it's the law of sufficiency and abundance. And with that law, you have to at least be coming from a space of this is enough, I'm satisfied, I'm, I'm looking at the positive aspects, I'm taking the lessons that I'm learning from this moment. I'm, you know, I, I don't, I don't love my boss, but at least the money I make at my job, you know, allows me to do this or that or whatever it is, like find some way of feeling some type of appreciation in whatever condition you have in your life, because we can always find bad if we look for it, but we can always find good if we look for it. So we have to start training our perception. We have to be the one that starts to filter through the perception that things are, are good and okay, at least okay, if not great and wonderful. So what are briefly the seven universal laws uh, that governs deliberate creation before we go into details for each one of them? And who created those laws? Uh, like for each law, there is a creator or founder, and then they somebody have combined them and said that those laws are the ones that you need. To... Just tell us more about that. Well, that, that's a great question. The, the universe created these laws. They're universal laws. They've been around since the dawn of time. Nobody said, okay, now I'm creating the law of attraction. Um, you know, these are, these are universal laws that govern the way our universe works. And it's the way when we learn how to work with them, our lives become a little bit easier, a lot easier, actually, a lot more fun, a lot more joyful. I was actually the one that pulled the different seven essential laws together because for me and all the studies that I've done over the years, there's more than seven laws. But for me, these seven laws are really the ones that all fit together. If you learn and master these seven laws, it, it, it's like a huge, like almost 90% of what you need to know in order to shift your life and make it happy. If not a hundred percent, it is for me. Um, you know, so I'm the one that pulled all of them together and said, these are my, these are my trinkets, right? These are, these are the things that work for me. These are the laws that everybody must know. The other ones are good. Nice to know they're important, but these are essential, really essential. And so what they are is law of attraction, law of deliberate creation, law of allowing law of sufficiency and abundance, law of pure potentiality, law of detachment and law of polarity. Who came up with the laws? Because as far as I know that there is a founder for the law of attraction, somebody who created a movement or created the law for the attraction of there is nothing like that. And what is the law of attraction? Well, the law of attraction, I mean, it's been talked about since the dawn of time. It's been talked about not in so many words saying this is law of attraction, but Jesus, Jesus Buddha, you know, it goes all the way back to there's threads of it in all the religions that we even have. So it's a universal principle. It's a spiritual principle. Um, the, the people that actually brought law of attraction and said this is law of attraction was Abraham Hicks. And that was early in the uh, early 80s. Other ways of saying it are the laws of deliberate creation. So, so, so it's like religiously it was there and there is scientifically somebody who have approved it or like called that it's exist. And however, like religion always goes like side by side with science. Um, and recently, like in the 70s or 80s, like somebody who like scientifically proved it or like kind of. Yeah, well, they didn't scientifically way, right? prove it. It was more of a spiritual like um, Abraham Hicks. If you don't know who they are, they they are a. Um, a, a group of beings that are channeled by Esther Hicks. And so she channels, you know, their information and on law of attraction, deliberate creation. And she's been doing that since the early eighties. And so they, those beings, when they channeled through her called this law of basically what you send out comes back, what you focus upon expands as law of attraction. 
So it's it's a way of positive thinking that I imagine that I'm going to have this specific house at certain period of time. And then because of that, this positive thoughts, I will track, I will attract the that, main, I mean, very, the thing to me. Or yeah, how that's a very it? simplistic, how do, how do very explain? elementary way of thinking of law of attraction. I don't mean to say it in that way, but I don't want to, I don't want to make it sound that easy that if you just think positive thoughts and, you know, I want a million dollars, a million dollars will fall on your head. You know what I mean? It's like, it's not that it's not that it, it's that simple, but it's not that easy in the sense that if we were just that's why one law, law of attraction is not enough. There's other laws that we have to work with in order to manifest what we want. That's why I don't talk about just law of attraction. I talk about all seven essential laws because what happens is we have to be in a space of allowing our dream home to happen. We have to believe that it's possible. We have to detach from what it looks like or when it's going to come or how it's going to come. We also have to know that we are physical beings and we have to take action in the physical world. And we have to keep the energy we send out, the energy vibration we send out at a higher vibration than a lower vibration. So that's where law of sufficiency and abundance comes in and kicks in. And we also have to take control over the way we feel and the way we think. So that's why all of them come together. It's not just positive thinking like, oh, let me think about the Maserati. Oh, let me go outside and see if it's in my, my car. It's not that simple. And I think that's a lot of people get tripped up on that and they think it's going to be that easy and then they get upset what's wrong with me oh law of attraction doesn't work when it's a universal law it works for every person we just need to know we go to kindergarten right and then we go to first grade second grade we don't go from kindergarten to master you know become a master whatever um get a master so so let's talk one by one in a bit of details and then we try to combine them all and and uh, to to prove sure. that's like all of them how it works I have to say this because this is the basis of everything to even understand the universal laws. So taking a step back, we are more energy than we are matter. Everything in the physical universe is energy. We are always emitting energy and vibrations in this vibrational universe. Everything that's in this universe, whether it be money, a partner, success, a career, it doesn't matter. Traffic, you know, losing your keys, everything. It, we, have a, we have a vibrational relationship with everything that exists in the universe that's energy, which is everything. So we have us that's energy having a relationship with everything that's vibrational that's also energy. So that's important to understand. Now with that, the energy that we emit, meaning the thoughts that we think, the beliefs that we hold, the things that we say, the things that we do, the emotions that we have, all of that get our energy out. It, it's a movement out. And that energy is going to then be attracted to like frequency or vibration. So things that match that. So if I'm coming from a low vibrational place and I'm in fear of money, that I'm not going to have enough, I'm not going to be paying my bills, that's a vibration that goes out and that gets matched to circumstances, situations, event that will match that energetic vibration that I send out. If I'm fearing money and I say, okay, as a deliberate creator, so here's the second law, law of deliberate creation, we decide the energy we're emitting out. We're not just going to do it by default. We get to say, this is the energy I want. This is a vibration. These are the circumstances, situations I want to experience. So you're observing you don't have any money, for example, can't pay your bills. So what do I want? I want to feel like I have enough money in the bank. I want to feel free. I want to enjoy my life and take these vacations. Well, now you're getting yourself in a higher vibration. And if you stay there long enough, what you're doing is you're sending out a signal that's going to change your frequency from low to high. So law of attraction is just matching. So, so, so what, what do I want is, what do I want is the law of attraction. That's a and good way of thinking of it. Yeah. Is more about exactly. the other laws. So, law of deliberate creation is basically I decide what I want to experience. So I decide I can I have one thing that I can control, and that's my vibration, that's my energy. So, how am I going to think? How am I going to feel? And then I'm going to do what I need to do to get into that place. Because the third law is the law of allowing, and the law of allowing. When you're in that space of allowing, it feels good. 
you feel expanded, you feel aligned, you feel connected. When you're disallowing and you're in any type of resistance, fear, doubt, disbelief, you know, sadness, resentment, any of those lower level emotions, I'm not saying bad emotions because all emotions are important. Those lower level emotions that then become a frequency set point, it also constricts us. And it, that Maserati that you want or the avenue to get to the Maserati can't be revealed because of the fact that you're so constricted. I don't know why I'm saying Maserati. I don't have a Maserati. I don't intend to have a Maserati, but the word Maserati keeps coming. So it's not even like one of my favorite cars, but it's just kind of, it's there. So I'm saying it. Um, maybe you want a Maserati. I don't know. No. Okay. So I don't know. Maybe one of the people are watching. Anyway, I don't know. Matter. It doesn't matter what it is. I'm using Maserati, Maserati I like, I like as cars. an example. <laughs> so if you feel good, you know you're in a space of allowing. Are we good so far? Yeah. Okay. So just with those three laws, let me tie it together for you. Yeah, yeah. I'm in an allowing space. I put myself there because I didn't have enough money. I wanted to feel good. I got my space in a place of feeling good. I'm now feeling allowing. I'm in a higher vibration because now I'm not resisting. So law of attraction can then bring things. I'm now open. So law of attraction can now bring things to me. So that's just three laws. Yeah. And the first one I say, I want something. Mm -hmm. And what I do, like, then the next one will come. All right. The next law. Well, Abraham Hicks talks about there's three, three steps to even law of attraction. Identifying what you want. And then the universe basically goes into creating. There's a vibrational vortex of what we want that's already been created energetically. And then it's up to Do you believe in universe or you believe in God or you believe in, in, in development or evolution? What it's do you believe all, in? Personally? It's all the same thing. It's like you think that, let's say, the, the theory of evolution came from God? Like example, I just want to know how yeah, you think. It's, it, it's all one. It doesn't matter if you call it God or goddess or all that is or evolution or, you know, we, we are we are evolution because we're still evolving. And, and that spark of inspiration that comes within us is that God self within. And that's the part of us that expands in our own desires. And that's how we evolve. That's how we we're creators. So that's what I, that's what I believe. I believe there's only there's only one like source. And that source is a creator. And that and the fact that the source creates allows evolution to happen. If you want the Islamic point of view, which is like we have we believe that our book, which is protected, the only book which is protected, let's say Christianity came from the same book, we believe. And uh, the Quran is the only book which is protected mm -hmm. by God uh, till this day. That's why there is no one letter change till this day. Not like the Bible, like people manipulated by the power and money and these things. Because the God, for reason or another, released the latest updated version of religion. So he protected uh, the Quran. So he's saying that uh, in Quran that uh, we created the man in the same shape, which is from Adam till this day. So the, as Muslims, we don't believe in the evolution uh, theory. But, but you, I, I, I get from where you are like talking about um, that something, a creation, universe, it doesn't matter if it's like God or something. You want to make it more generalized that there is something that creates this power. Yeah, I get this point. <clears throat> then what is the That's next That's a good step? point. And it's, and it's, and it, this knowing about the universal laws doesn't go against any religions because it's a universal principles. There's spiritual principles that Buddha, Jesus, it doesn't matter. Muhammad, they all talked about it. And it's the energy behind it. It's, it's knowing that you can, as a human being, you have your own free will to think what you want to think, feel what you want to feel. And based on that, that's what you're going to create in your experience. Now there's going to be contrast that shows up things that we necessarily don't want, but it's up to us to decide how are we going to feel, how are we going to think about this condition or this circumstance that does show up. Does that make sense? And all of it is for our own evolution, our own creation, our own expansion. So yes. So the fourth law is the law of sufficiency and abundance and the law of sufficiency and abundance is really that everything in the universe 
when you, it is abundant. I don't care if you go to the Sahara Desert, you cannot count how many grains of sand. Try to go count that. It's impossible. There's an abundance of sand. Go to the Pacific Ocean and try to count how many waves or how many ounces of water. How many galaxies? We don't even know. Like they're like we're in one galaxy. There's more galaxies even out there. There's more stars in the sky that we can even count. So nature in its infinite intelligence, you know, leaves on a tree. We can't sit there and count all of them. There's too many. And there's always more coming. So this we apply it in, on, let's say, money. There is countless amount yes. of money that we have to attract. Okay. There's there there's pure potentiality in everything. And if we believe and can connect with the energy of abundance, it's not just even believing, it's feeling that sense of abundance. Abundance has a high vibration, whereas lack has a low vibration. And if we're believing in lack and feeling like there's not enough, or I'm not good enough, or he's not doing enough, those kind of things, we're in lack and limitation. We're always constricted, so we're never in a state of allowing. And what comes back to us from law of attraction is more of the same. It's law. So when you're getting to a place of abundance and you align with the truth of our universe, which is abundance, you start to see evidence of abundance all over your life. But aligning means believing that I believe that there is limitless of whatever I want. It's, believing is part of aligning. It's, it's literally feeling. It's feeling that source within you. It's feeling that abundance and that connection with that energy of abundance because everything's energy in the universe. So when you connect, connect and align with that feeling of abundance, you're also connected with source because source is abundance. And number, number five. five, the law of pure potentiality. The law of pure potentiality is that again, there are no limitations in the universe. The only limitations are the ones that we impose on ourselves. So the, the fact that we can think of a thought, and think of something that we desire, there is potential, whether we believe it or not, there is that potential to create whatever it is we thought about in the universe because there is no lack and limitation in the universe. The universe can make things happen that we don't even know. The universe can surprise and delight us beyond our wildest dreams because we're in our limited thinking that this can happen or that can't happen. But with the universe, there's pure potentiality. But it's not the same like the, it looks like the same like uh, number four law. What's the name of number law four of and number five? sufficiency and abundance. Yeah, they're, they're different in the sense that there's lack, there's abundance. Which, which side are you going to be on? And in order to start feeling abundance, it's not just the law of abundance. It's the law of sufficiency and abundance. You have to feel at least satisfied with where you're at in order. That's like the doorway into abundance because you can't create abundance from a space of lack. So, so how, how can we separate between satisfaction and perfection? How we can balance That's a great question. Two? That's a really great question. Perfection, um, that's my first book that I wrote about. It's called Perfect Pictures. And like I wrote about in Perfect Pictures, we have an idea of what perfection looks like, right? It's, it's, it's societal. It's our own beliefs of what perfect looks like. And unless it looks a certain way, it's not perfect. And then what seems to happen is once we make something perfect or try to make something perfect, we then want something more, something else is different because you're coming from the perspective that this right here is not enough. So something needs to be changed in order for it to become perfect. Whereas satisfaction is it's perfect as it is. It's good enough as it is. Nothing has to be fixed or changed in order for it to meet some kind of standard or goal it just, it is what it is. There's, it's an allowing space. Makes sense. So it's a, it's, it's a way of like how we shift our mindset to think about it in yeah. this way. So we can feel satisfied. Number six. Number six is the law of detachment. And you're going to say, isn't this a lot like law of allowing? And it is similar, but it's got different nuances. So that's why it's important to learn these. Um, so law of detachment is basically that anything you want in the physical universe you have to relinquish your attachment to it because if you're feeling 
when's it coming? Where is it? How is he coming? Who's he? Who is he? You know, like all the things that we, we, we want this thing. Well, I want this business. When are my clients coming? Where are they going to, you know, when are they going to show up? How am I going to, you know, all the hows and all that kind of stuff. That really is the place where we're attached. And with that comes anxiety and fear. Excuse me for just a minute. So it comes that anxiety and that fear. And there's a certain attachment to it. And when we're, you know, think about when you got a closed fist, you can't receive anything. To receive something, you need an open hand. And so when you think of a goal that you want or a, a desire that you have, if your energy is like, oh, like anxious and fearful and doubting, you are in some way attached to the outcome. And you're also limiting the universe. It's got to look like this. So you have to be almost detached in where and when and how and who and all that. Just knowing that the essence of what you want and the desire will manifest if you keep taking the steps. What's the difference between satisfaction and fulfillment? <sighs> That's a good question, too. You know, for me, satisfaction is this is enough for now. This, this is enough. Like, this is good enough. Like, this is, these are the positive aspects. Fulfillment for me feels like just like you can't possibly add any more to this. It's just it's full. But again, it's the highest again, level of satisfaction. Yes, but the thing is to remember, too, in this physical universe where it's everything is energy, there's always there is always emptiness and then fulfillment and then emptiness and fulfillment. And we need both. Like we take a breath in. And that's our fulfillment. And then we take a breath out and we empty. So there's always this energetic flow that's happening. And it's why it's important to understand energy. I'm sorry. And the last law. The last law is the law of um, polarity. And the law of polarity really means that any subject is really a lot of subjects. So, for example, you've got a temperature, okay? Temperature is a subject, it's a thing. But on one extreme, you could have really, really hot. And on the other hand, you could have extreme cold. And then you can have a spectrum of everything in between. So for example, someone that's wanting to attract money. Well, I'm focused on money. How come I'm not attracting money? I mean, where is it anyway? I mean, like, you know, I really need this money. I'm, fo I'm focusing on law of attraction. I'm, I'm being positive, I'm focused. I'm, I'm like saying I want the money. Yeah, but the pull that you're on is way in lack. Instead of feeling relaxed, allowing, feeling detached when it's going to come, getting a hold of your thoughts and your emotions that they're coming from a positive expectation type of place, yet you're aligned with the abundance, that you're knowing that there's pure potential in the whole entire universe. When you're on that side of the pole, that's when law of attraction kicks in and gives you money. That's how all of them work together. Uh, and those like seven laws you think that adds fulfillment happiness what exactly those seven laws add to to my life it or adds our what life? You, if, it adds, if i master them yeah it adds whatever them. you want them to add and why why i say that is because if you're looking for just trinkets of success out here you want the wife and you want the husband or you want the car or you want the house or you want the you know business all those things they can absolutely those laws will help you manifest all those things But what's most important in working with universal laws, it's not an outside in. Like, if I get this, then I'll be happy. You have to be happy in order to attract the things. So if you want to have outrageous success, you have to feel the feeling of success within yourself. And then you magnetize those things too. You draw those things too. Yes, you still take action, but you are now coming from a place of feeling satisfied. And you have more things to be satisfied with. So applying the universal laws helps with the emotions that we want to experience. So whatever that is for you, I always say to someone, what's the essence of what you want? Is it, you know, is the most important thing for you to feel freedom? Then cultivate that feeling of freedom because what's going to happen is freedom for you will then be reflected from other things in the world. So for years ago, I was like, you know, freedom is really the most important energy that I vibrate in. I really love the feeling of freedom. I have to feel that feeling of freedom. And because of that, 
I've attracted everything in my life that reflects, reflects that vibration. So money, for example, and the kind of business that I have and the husband that I have and kids that I have, everything is reflective of that vibration of freedom. If you want to feel love and that's the dominant vibration you want to experience, you know, then the, the outer reality of things will reflect that vibration of love, contentment, success, you know, joy. You write about relationships, how to attract the right partner. How do you attract the, your ideal partner? Well, first and foremost, you have to get clear. Like, what do you want in a partner? You know, what don't you want? Like, think about all the other past relationships that you've had, the, the qualities that you didn't necessarily appreciate about someone. And then ask, like, what's the opposite of that? So, for example, you know, um, in a past relationship, I had someone that was, you know, not motivated, very lazy. I wanted someone that was motivated. I, I also had someone that didn't really believe in universal laws and didn't want to work on themselves. Like, the personal development wasn't important. I want someone that's really into working on himself and, and doing this work and learning about universal laws. That's spiritual. So you, you look at the things that you don't want because we're so used to doing that. We're so trained in doing that. And then you ask yourself, what do I want? And then from that place, you make a list and make sure that everything you put on that list, you actually believe is possible. Because again, law of pure potentiality, you have to detach from when this person is going to come, what they're going to look, what they're going to look like, who they're going to be. I mean, I put on my list I'm physically attractive because that's important to me. I want to be attractive to the person. So I was very clear, wrote down all the qualities, characteristics, things that mattered to me, things that were really important. And I could have, you know, dated anybody, not anybody, but you know what I'm saying? I could have attracted someone else but maybe wasn't that I wasn't physically attracted to, or maybe didn't have that spiritual connection that I wanted. So I held out, I detached, I knew the universe would bring, bring me him. And I met my husband, Frederick. So it's again, applying the universal laws. I detached from the places where I was like, when is, is that him? When's he coming? Who's it going to be? Where's it going to be? How, you know, all that kind of stuff. Right. <laughs> and I had to get on the pole of, I believe he's there and, and I'm detached from but but after he comes also you need to analyze like his like you know um, features let let's say like what's like the things that you like or things that you don't like that things that he has i mean do you, and do he you, had all yeah. the, all the positive aspects and he's not perfect he's got flaws we all do we all have our points of growth but in my list and in my desire the things that are his flaws or his growth points aren't deal breakers for me do you believe in equalizing the woman with the man and everything? I believe there's feminine and, and, and masculine energy. And I believe there needs to be a balance in a relationship. So my husband might take on more feminine qualities and I might take on more masculine where it relates to some issues in our lives or some situation. But we balance each other really well. And then I might be more in my feminine and where he just steps up and becomes more masculine. So it's more of not equal. It's more of a balance. What's the energetic uh, grid and how to deal with it? The it's a great question. Um, everything's energy and everything from a, from a coming from, now I'm not a scientist, but this is what I do now. Everything from coming from a place of just energy, like this right here is just energy. And if you, if you take your hands together and you start to go like this, you can actually feel energy pulsating. This is energy. To get this to come from energy into some kind of, physical manifestation, a cup, a computer, whatever it is, it needs to go through a process. It has to turn from energy into particles and subatomic particles and atoms and da-da-da-da-da, right? It all sets up through an energetic grid. That's how it starts. It's like a grid. And so we all have grids. We all have ideas on money. And if we can work with our grids and look at our grids and see where is our grids just mucked up, and, you know, full of just lack and limitation and clear out those energetic grids. It helps in working with energy to attract what you want. Talking a lot about energy, like, I don't know why Interstellar, uh, the movie, came to my I mind. Did, did you that, see the I movie? Just, yes, past weekend. I did. I was very, you know, it's, it's what I teach. And so I was, I, I left there even more expanded 
than than my own knowledge because one of the things that it's very emotional very there are some scenes yeah amazing. absolutely well one thing that got me and i i talk about this in the we teach we train coaches to do this in the quantum success coaching academy is working with your future self and i've been working with my future self like this for so long and it's amazing to me because i literally live my life now from the future self that I created five years ago or three years ago. And so I like every once in a while, I'll be like, Oh my gosh, I totally envisioned this. Like this was my future self and now I'm living it. And so that movie helped me understand that future self really, really does exist. And it's sending us messages and information all the time because in quantum physics, there are thousands of possible future selves that exist out there. And some are okay. Futures, some are better than okay. Some are amazing and awesome and the most, be, you know, the best possible things. And when we can align and connect with that future self, that future self that does exist in a totally different time spectrum than we have, that future self can then send us information and give us gifts, send, you know, um, tell us to go this way instead of that way, you know, give us that impulse to call this person or, or don't call this person. You know, literally, you could create a relationship that guides you from a future self. What's the difference between meditation and prayer? In prayer? You know, prayer is a form of meditation. There are so many, there are thousands of ways to meditate. Really, meditation is, is getting out of the outside world. It's taking the outside world away and focusing within. It's getting aligned and connected. So you could do a walking meditation, even though you're outside in the physical world, your presence is focused on the step that you're taking. And there's just feel full presence in that moment. It's, it's a, it's a um, getting rid of the monkey mind thoughts and things like that. But when you are praying, if you pray, the, if you play, let me say this. If you're praying for what you do want and you're praying for peace and you're praying for and you're coming from that pole of like expecting the prayer to happen and it, and it being from a positive place, that's a form of meditation. If you're like, oh, God, please, you know, and, and you're you're begging and you're like in doubt and you know, you're in fear and all that kind of stuff. That's not a space of meditation because you're in that space of lack. So maybe pray. I'd like some more love instead of fear or I'd like some more patience instead of being impatient. But a lot of times people pray because they're like on their knees, I can't take it anymore, you know, that kind of thing. That's not a form of meditation. What's the formula that you teach to create uh, the ideal uh, body? Well, like everything I've been talking about, it's really working with these, the inner universal laws. Because like when people want to lose weight, for example, it is about diet and exercise. We need to move our bodies. We need to eat properly. But the biggest component why most people can't sustain their, the weight that they want to be at or why they don't lose weight and keep it off, for example, or why they're not in really great health is because of their mindset. Oh, you know, you gain weight when you get older. So then that becomes their reality. Or, you know, my family's always been overweight. So then that they live into that. The, the mindset and, and the energy that we bring in, oh, I don't have what it takes to look beautiful. It's coming from the lack and not the abundant side of the pole. So we need to align ourselves with what we truly do want. You know, my, my mom always had a big stomach, so therefore I think I'm going to. Or, you know, it, or once you get kids, you're always going to be sick. I bought into that one. You know, it's knowing that you have control of your own immune system and you can create the body that you want. But it's feeling the body that you want before it even has manifested. How long, like, when some people or patients or people needs help comes to you, like, how long this process takes to shift them, like, they are desperate about money or about achieving something, to put them in this mind, mindset, like, you know, status and, and, and try to shift their life into, you know, from negativity to positivity? How long usually it takes? I know it yeah. varies, but, like, I think you have kind of a general... Uh, time limit. Yeah, well, I, I do want to make this point, and you made the point, but I really want to make this point. It, it's not about the time, it's a matter of how much resistance someone has. So if someone has a lot of resistance and a lot of bad programming, say on money, then it's going to take them more inner work and therefore probably take a lot more time. Although it could happen really quick if someone shifts and lets all the resistance go. 
So it does take a process and how deep the resistance is really depends on the amount of time. But I do see people that have come on my teleseminars and, you know, wanted to attract money and start to attract like a lot of money, like $25,000, $50,000, like literally overnight, $10,000. Oh my gosh, I just got a check in the mail and it's overnight. It could happen in a couple of days. Um, I've had other people that just really struggle with it because they've got so much resistance on money. So it, it really is dependent on the law of allowing how much they allow it and how much they, they're willing to let go and do their inner work and release, release the resistance that they have. So you advise them to do some, you know, actionable things like, let's say, do some sport or meditation so they can relax. To, yes. To allow yeah. or... It's perfectly well said, you know, pet your cat. Play with your dog, play with your kids, do something that you feel good about that the resistance will subside because it's all about resistance. When that's, that's what blocks us from, from being in an allowing space. What do you advise the people uh, in the downtime? Like all of us have it, like what they should do to change their mood and, and, and get out of this depression, like in our downtime. It's important to always pay attention to how you feel. So one of the things I recommend to people is like take a post-it note and put it on your computer or your phone or set an alarm on your phone or put it in your car and just check in, you know, like how are you feeling? And check in with how you're feeling because if you're feeling bad, it's because you're having thoughts. Everything's vibration. So if you're if you're tuning into a low vibration and you're choosing thoughts that are matching that vibration. So try to find a better feeling thought. Because the thoughts always come before the emotion that we're feeling. And if you're feeling good, great. You can even amplify it. There's a process called the 68 second process where it takes literally 17 seconds to shift a vibration. You keep doing that up until 68 seconds. That's when law of attraction kicks in vibrationally. So even if you're feeling good, you can think of something like, oh my gosh, this was so great. This happened. And, you know, really amp up your vibration to make yourself feel even better. If you're feeling bad, you know, I'm feeling depressed. Find out what are your thoughts that you're thinking? You know, I say, I say this to my kids and it's so elementary, but it's so true. You know, if they're feeling bad, I'm like, what are you thinking? Well, Maxim won't play with me. You know, do you need Maxim to play with you or can you go have fun on your own? You know, it's like you're being in a place of total, like, I can't play now because he doesn't want to play with me. Go up and play with yourself, you know, go do something yourself. And, and so we have to change our thoughts in order to change the manifestation for, for the manifestation equation is our beliefs give birth to our thoughts. Our thoughts give birth to our emotions. Our emotions give thoughts to our birth to our behaviors. So if we're behaving in a way that's not, dis not empowering, we need to change the emotions, but we need to go back and change the thoughts and you change the thoughts by changing your beliefs. Yeah, I can feel the energy from here. It's amazing, your, your energy. Like your husband sometimes is not telling you that I cannot control this energy or the vibration when you come home. And he just like, I mean, amazing your energy. I Thank can you. feel it from here. So let's go more into the professional life as an author or, or expert. How do you market for your live well, events? Well, the only live events I do is um, with my community that's of the QSCA, which is the coaching certification. So my two live events that I personally do and put on, I do a business event for the coaches, and then I do a, an event just for women called the Goddess Week, the Goddess Rising Experience. And so those are the only two events that I put on every year. And um, I, I, I get the community, I attract the community to go into the QSCA because I believe that no matter what I do, I'm, it's all about adding value. So I have a weekly internet show that I do on christywhitman.com where I teach people, you know, anywhere from five to 20 minutes each week on different aspects of the universal laws. So it's a video, um, you know, video show. Um, when I, when it's time to, um, open up registration for the QSCA, we do a bunch of video series. So I'm giving tons of information, tons of value on coaching. So that's how I've done my business is that it's all about giving. It's all about giving value. And the people that resonate with what I'm teaching will then want to come and coach with me, join my programs, read my books, those type of things. So Quantum Success Coaching Academy is an event or there is a course? It's a course. It's a 12-month course. It's a uh, Law of Attraction certification course to become a coach. How much it costs? 
and like is it like uh, a weekly uh, one to one one on one you're, you're in a group it it's a group coaching program um, and you're in a group in a classroom basically on the phone so we have coaches in India we have coaches I mean like all over the world Italy Greece US you know, Canada. So everybody either listens to the calls from a teacher. We have a teacher that, that teaches, um, there's about 40 people in a class and they teach either, they teach on the phone, but you listen through either your speakers on your computer or you can be on the phone with them and you can interact with them by like asking questions, and things like that. Like now with the, with the internet, there is a crazy amount number of coaches and what's your advice for the coaches out there to uh, to market themselves to stand out and, and and survive from what what they're trying to do like a lots of huge number of life coaches i see nowadays and uh, personal coaches so what what's your advice to that's them? a great question um my advice is always what i tell people in business it's you have to work with the universal laws because they're the the rules that govern our universe and one of the laws is a law of pure potential or excuse me a law of polarity With the way I like to describe this as it relates to business is the subject is us, but we are on two pole, opposite poles. We are metaphysical beings and we are physical beings. So in business, you have to do both. You have to align yourself with the energy and the vibration that you want to receive. So if you want your business to be successful, you need to feel and vibrate from that place of success. And you need to work with law of allowing to make sure that there is any resistance that comes in there You know, so be in that place of abundance, you know, again, applying all the universal laws like we talked about. Then also there's the physical part of us. That's where we have to learn about marketing. We have to learn strategies that work. You know, we have to learn what we want to work on. I mean, there's so many different ways of marketing yourself as a coach. So pick an area. Maybe it's working on Facebook or it's doing live events, or it's going and doing speaking engagements. That's how I started out when I first got my book. I went and started speaking at you know churches and communities, and I would gather people's names and emails, and keep. I kept in touch with them, and, and I would deliver them tons of value. And what happens is you have to be patient because this is a business. And I see a lot of coaches, they get really impatient, and then they quit because you are building a business, and it does take time. It took me time, too. So stick with it. If you don't quit, you can't fail. So you suggest that they give value for free and and keep adding value until like start building like list of customers and then they start get, getting, let's say, paid engagements, uh, speaking engagements. It's, it's important. Things. It's important to know what your strategies are and know how you want to um, get people into your marketing funnel, how you're going to serve them. It's it, Those are important strategies to know. Who's helping you with your internet marketing strategies? Uh, how many people working with you? Is there a specific company or like people offline uh, full time? Um, I've actually you? been working with a company um, since the very beginning that I started my business. And she's a she's a woman from Fusion Online Marketing named Terry Romine. And she has about four or five people that work for her. So they do all of my technical stuff that I don't care to do. That's also another thing, you know, as, as a as a business tip that I can give people is that know what your skills and know what your passions are and the rest of it, give it to someone else to do. Because for me to learn Internet marketing in the sense of like coding and, you know, putting up videos and all that kind of stuff, I don't want to do that. I want to deliver my message in front of the video camera. You know, I want to give from my heart and serve. I want to coach people to help them change their lives. I want to write books. I want to teach. These are the things that I do. Everything else, I have a team of people. And it wasn't like I hired everybody overnight. You know, I started with Terry first. And she automized, you know, my emails that I sent out to people. And, you know, then it grew from there. But get people, like, I don't like to do bookkeeping and accounting. I have accountants. I have a bookkeeper. My husband is the director of finance for the company. He watches the numbers. I don't care to do that stuff. I, I just want to teach. I want to share what I know about the universal laws and help people change their lives. So that's been one of the keys to my success is I don't waste my time on things that drain me and I don't like. I hire people that are experts in that, that do like doing it and can be part of an amazing team. I have a dream team. They're amazing. 
how do you write efficiently and uh, which time of the day you you prefer to write and uh, how you plan your writing? I actually don't I'm <laughs> I I write when I'm inspired and when I have a project or something due I will make sure I meditate and then I'll block off some time in the morning because I know that for me I'm most creative in the morning so I make sure that if I do have something like a chapter that's due in my new book or you know something like that I'll go ahead and make sure I'm doing my metaphysical work first so I'll meditate then I'll take the time in the morning and then I'll go on to other things but typically if I'm writing the, the how I write is like things come in concepts to me so I just boom and it's like oh my gosh I need a pen this is great stuff right and so then I got to write it down and start allowing the source to come through me and so once I have the concept down so that could be in the middle of a car ride with my kids I'm like I need a pen you know um once I But you don't do outline for a book? Well, no, that's what, yeah, that's what I'm saying. Once the download comes, like this book, The Art of Having It All, um, you know, it's just coming out in 2015. Um, it was literally just downloads. And I had to take a journal and a pen with me everywhere I went because I was constantly getting, you know, downloads. You prefer to write or you dictate no, no, I write. speak? I'm, I'm definitely a writer and it just, something happens, like my hand just goes by itself when I write. So it's pretty cool. But then after that download process has happened, that's when I go in and start to expand on the things that I downloaded and give, put, then put in my, um, my ideas or my uh, examples and then having to organize it into cohesive chapters. Publishing or self-publishing and what? They're both very different. Both of them have very different, you know, benefits and advantages and things like that. If you, um, you know, the, the world of publishing is so different. Before it was like if you self-published, you couldn't get on major media TV and that's not the case anymore. Um, you're going to have to do most of your marketing whether you publish or not. Um, those, like the days of authors. Now, days now, of authors. now if you have the option of publishing or self-publishing which one you would you choose now for you for um, I would probably self-publish you can make more money per book um, you have more control like this last book it's it's kind of a self-published but not it, it is a publisher but it, it's a feeling of a self-publishing I every word that went into that book it was my words it wasn't changed um, I'm gonna make more money per book that's sold than if it was you know just a publisher I'm getting a royalty um, I, I basically can have creative control in the marketing of it. So it, it allows me to really speak my voice in a very authentic way. Um, the, the, the one that hits the New York Times bestseller list was, it was published. published or it was called, yeah, it was published by Ben Bell. And you still would go Bell. with self-publishing now? if you make an, a new one how to get into the list like can you tell us about the process how how much cells you need within how long to, yeah the, to the, the, the new york times if you're looking to hit the new york times list it's they take it in during a seven day cycle so it has to be within a week and um you have to sell anywhere from 11 to 15,000 um copies of your book depending on what also comes out that week. If you have like 50 shades of gray coming out or you got Harry Potter coming out, you know, that tends to get people to buy those books. So it's, you probably have to sell more books during that week. Um, so good to know that stuff. Um, but it's a combination of people buying in stores and online. So a lot of people are doing online campaigns to hit, you know, Amazon, number one Amazon and become a bestseller on Amazon, but they don't hit the New York Times list because they're not getting also a sample of the brick and mortar stores and, and it needs to be both. So if I'm not in the bookstores, I cannot hit the exactly. New York Times bestselling list. Exactly. And as a self-publisher, it's very difficult to be in, this, it in, depends the, in on, the stores. Well, so it, de it your... depends because if you self-publish, you want to work obviously with, um, you know, a, a, a distributor. Like there's there's pure self-publishing and I've done that route. I wrote um, a, a, how, to, how to tell if your, um, su your college friends are suicidal and what to do about it. That was complete self-publishing. I own the rights to it. Anything like any distribution, I had to do the legwork. And then there's a spectrum. Then there's like this, this is kind of self-publishing what I'm doing, even though I have a publisher, but it's kind of like the feeling of self-publishing. So my publisher basically has taken care of all the distribution and has gotten it into like the Amazons and Barnes and Nobles. And so you get a distributor, yes. but you own the rights. Yeah. And uh, yes. 
Which distributor? Well, the, the big ones with? are like Ingram and Taylor, and um, there's another one. I'm, I've lost it right now. Um, anyway. No worries. What else do you do to market the book? <clears throat> like to, when you have a book that you are launching soon, what do you do? What are the steps or things that you, you, well, you have, have to, to you have to get you have to get it in people's hands. You got to have you got to get people reading it and reviewing it and getting them to do reviews. I mean, the, the best way to market a book is getting people to recommend a book, um, getting people to 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 just say, hey, this is my this is my friend Christy. And, you know, I'd love for you to check out her new book. I mean, that goes a long way. Um, getting on social media and doing things like that so that people are passing along. Like, hey, this is my friend. She just you know, wrote a book or this is this great teacher. She just wrote a book so that people are saying, hey, you got to buy this book. I just read it. It's fantastic. It's taught me this and that. Word of mouth is the best type of marketing. There's so many different strategies. You could do TV. You know, you could do podcasts on the Internet. There's there's tons of different ways. What are the tools or software that you use to make you more efficient? Well, I have Infusionsoft, which is or it organizes my database on everything, um, and my team. I mean, uh, they're they're they take care of all that stuff so that I don't have to. How your work and life routine look like from the time you wake up till you sleep? Well, I usually wake up and I meditate, and then I go work out. And I like this morning, I was up at five o'clock. And, uh, but this is not a typical, you know, like my days are always different, but today I meditated, I went and worked out, I came home, I cuddled with my boys, I made them breakfast, I drove them to their little school and came home and had a lovely breakfast with my husband and talked for a while and, and uh, meditated a little bit more and then started my work day. Do you follow any routine to sleep? I like to, I like to get a good seven hours if I can. That's that's prime for me. For me. Oh, what I'm, you yes. do before you sleep, like yeah, or I just yeah. um, I always try to. <laughs> it, it's really important, either first thing in the morning or right before you go to bed, to put positive messages in your mind because that's when our brains are most receptive. So my practice is always the same. I wake up and I meditate and I make sure that the thoughts that I'm thinking are always high, high positive thoughts because that's what's going to start the energy for the day. And then before I go to bed, I either read a book, maybe a page or two, um, you know, just to get good positive thoughts in my head. And I meditate on what I read, have read in that book. What are your other hobbies? Well, I love to work out. I like to I like to ski. I like to go shopping. I like to spend time with my girlfriends. Um, I I like to uh, I like I, I, my it's, it's almost like my career is my hobbies. Like I love to write. I love to create. I love to manifest. Which product or service or book made you the most of the money? Is it like digital products, books? Well, the, the big part of my business is the QSEA. Yeah. yeah. The coaching. Yeah. yeah. Top three mentors. Top three mentors. Um, my first one I would have to say is Karen Lamarck Wilson. She's an amazing mentor and I still she's still my, my coach. Um, amazing woman. Um, I would have to say Ken Stone is a, also a fantastic mentor for me. And um, I'm trying to think who else. Um, Brendan Bouchard was a good mentor years ago for me. Top three books. Uh, on the top of the list is Ask and It Is Given. It's my very favorite book ever. Um, um, yeah. Ask and It Is Given from Abraham Hicks. Absolutely. Any of their books are, are amazing. Um, I would have to say that that book is definitely first. Um, Soul, Soul Love from Sinea, Sinea Roman. That's a fantastic book. Um, oh, and this, this seven, um, The Seven Spiritual Laws of Success by Deepak Chopra. That's a great book as well. Uh, top three people that you're inspired by. Oh, my kids are, first of all, number one, my husband. And, um, you know, I have to say Matthew McConaughey just recently seeing Interstellar. Um, he, he really is a, a male version of having it all. And uh, You've seen Dallas Club, Dallas uh, something club, Dallas, the AIDS Dallas Club. Dallas Club. 
yeah the, uh, the acting was better like even then oh he's he's, he's his acting he's, yeah he just you know he he's just in his work and his you can see he's just full of life and joy and he lives by these principles you can tell top three apps that you use on your smartphone i don't use any <laughs> i use i think facebook and skype but other than that i don't use any uh, top three most important factors for success in three words Hmm. Know yourself. Know yourself. Um, do you listen to any music when you work? Not when I work, but I listen to music in the morning and at night. And I love dance music and I, I love like pop music and, you know, songs like that. What are the habits that you're trying to develop to stay efficient? Staying focused, always knowing what my projects are that I'm working on and picking the top three um, and being really clear on what my priorities are because things can come at us a lot. And uh, I can say yes to everything and I would be just totally scattered and, and wouldn't be happy. So knowing what my three priorities are and, and sticking to those. Last two questions. What makes you really happy and uh, how people can contact you? What makes me really happy is when I'm connected to myself, when my God is self. Because whatever I do, whatever I look at, whatever I'm you know, whatever conditions I have in my life, it's always coming from a higher place. So that's, that's number one. And how they can contact me is christywhitman.com. Thank you so much, Christy, for the great information. Really appreciate it. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Thanks, everyone. Be efficient and stay efficient and see you soon with another leading expert.